Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. This week it's DB9 and it's a continuation of the infamous ticking sound, which if you haven't watched it already, click here for that video and then come back to this video uh, because what we've got now in the workshop is a car that is making a ticking sound and we're going to show on an engine block with some hardware exactly uh, what's causing this sound and then uh, just touch on what the rectification is unfortunately with the tick to this extent it's piston slap in liner it's the little m bearing this is going to be comprehensive uh, engine rebuild and it comes down to the parts and labor cost of each individual engine what what it needs to rebuild and correct the condition versus the complete remanufactured engine from the factory which you could purchase uh, given two repair routes. So let's go to the workshop and we can have a look at a car with this particular problem. So obviously we're underneath the car now. Uh, we're going to start it from cold and you'll hear that there's no abnormal sound, no ticking when the engine is cold. When it's up to fully warm operating temperature, often with engines that have got this problem, they don't exhibit the problem even at that condition. What you have to do is get the engine RPM up to about 3000 RPM, hold it there for I don't know, something like two, three minutes and then come off the throttle. And when it then returns to idle is when the ticking noise will um, start to be more pronounced. You'll probably find that if you started a DB9 and got it fully warm and there was no ticking and then went off and had a drive, motorway cruise or, or just you know an A-road drive, come to rest for the first time that's probably where you'll hear the ticking. So this is really important when you do a pre-purchase inspection on a DB9. Even though you've got it fully warm and the engine is sounding smooth, you want to increase the RPM, get it to that 3000 point for about two or three minutes, and then at idle, um, see if it develops the ticking sound. Because there's quite a lot of people that do miss the engine exhibiting this sound in an inspection of a car and then end up buying a car with this problem. So we're underneath now, uh, it's just cold started, still on fast idle and as you can hear directly underneath the sump there's absolutely no abnormal noises whatsoever. The engine sounds silky smooth as sweet as they all do. So now we're warm and now we're in increase the RPM and see if we can promote the condition. So as you can hear, even at this speed, there's no abnormal noises, so the condition isn't even detectable yet. So now we can hear the cyclic tick as we've lowered the engine RPM after getting considerable heat above the piston crown. And, and underneath this is quite noticeable, quite audible. If you were viewing this uh, on the car that wasn't up in the air, then just put your head behind either driver or passenger front wheels and the, the noise is very noticeable from underneath the car, uh, less so from above the car. Okay, so this is an uh, old block. It's been on the shelf for quite a while, so it has a little bit of corrosion on the liners. Uh, but this block was removed from a car that was making exactly the same sound as what we've just heard. And it's a combination of two things. Uh, we've never really found um, engines that exhibit this sound not to be a combination of both these errors. So it makes the repair a little bit more difficult because if it was just the little end bush, then it's quite a simple rebuild. You don't need to go to the extent of machining out all the liners and then rebuilding with new liners, new pistons, which is extremely uh, expensive. The, the parts are very dear. The machining process is dear. Uh, so what's happened is this is a V12 piston. And due to whatever wear condition has caused the problem, there, there can be a few reasons why um, 
the liner distorts, no one really knows for sure. I mean, without machining out a liner and measuring very accurately the parent bore, we're not going to know if there's distortion in the parent bore, which has caused distortion in the liner, or this ovality in the liner is purely in the liner and not the parent bore. It's quite a, a complex measurement activity process to go through to understand that and even in our world here we just repair uh, what, what we uh, see in front of us which is wrong. Um, so with the liner that's worn oval um, every time the piston reaches top dead center it's going to slap in the bore as it transitions up and down. So on the noise that we just heard some of that noise could be only piston slap. So if it wasn't anything to do with the piston or liner going oval then it will be the small end bush and this type is the old type design that hasn't got any oil channels uh, in them. On about 2008 engines they had an oil channel and some of the noise that we heard could just be when heat expansion takes place this pin rocking in the comrod. Now on this particular one I'm not going to pick it up on the camera uh, but, but I can already feel in there and I'm out of play so it um, stands to reason that when heat expansion is taking place and this is fully warm that uh, this is going to exhibit the similar sort of ticking noise that we just heard. But as I said in our experience really I don't see a uh, little end wear separate from uh, the liner and piston slap issue. It's a little bit chicken and egg. Was it this one that caused the piston to move in the liner in a different way and wear it over? Um, as I say, who knows, um, that's a quite a big factory sort of uh, research uh, activity to understand what's going wrong with the product. Obviously now, years later, um, they're not going to conduct that. You know, this engine is way out of production and they're out of any liability in terms of uh, three-year maker warranty. Um, fortunately, if the problem does occur, then it's down to the owner to, uh, to resolve. Uh, I hope that uh, informed you a little bit more about the dreaded DB9 tick. Uh, if you like this video, um, if you like any of our other videos, then it really helps us if you can like, subscribe, and uh, let us know some comments uh, below. Thank you.